Pace Paper, History and Methods. Pace papers are one of the oldest forms of decorated papers. They originated from German-speaking areas during the late 16th century and are used to cover books and serve as end sheets. Their use in the United States can be traced to members of the Moravian Church who immigrated to Pennsylvania in the 1740s. By the 19th century, paste papers were considered old-fashioned. However, with austerity measures during World War I, paper bindings and the papers that decorated them came back into use, with many innovations in manufacture and aesthetics. Paste papers are made by mixing water-soluble pigments, dry, tempera, acrylic, etc., into a paste made from flour, starches of other kinds, or more modern materials such as methocellulose. Patterns can be made by brush strokes, pulling, stamps, rollers, or any combination of these and more. A simple recipe for paste is to use three tablespoons of flour for each cup of water. Using a whisk to eliminate lumps, the paste needs to be cooked for 10 minutes in a double boiler to avoid burning. Once cooked, the paste should be cooled before use. Instead of cooking the paste, you can also achieve the same result by dissolving pre-cooked wheat paste available from talus supplies into the water. Paste will last up to five days if kept refrigerated. Otto Werner, a German-born bookbinder, is credited with keeping the craft alive in the United States. His work, often executed in painstakingly hand-tooled Morocco leather, leather, was marked by a sturdy yet elegant simplicity. From 1942 to 1982, he was the chief bookbinder for rare editions at the Houghton Library at Harvard University. Here's an example of his use of paste paper for a book from 1948. James Fraser produced a collection of paste papers of the Golden Hind Press in an edition of 70 in 1983 that presented different kinds of paste paper patterns. A similar collection was produced by Carol Blinn in her serious play, Decorated Paste Papers from 2006, in an edition of 35. More accessible are trade editions, such as TJM Marx's An Anthology of Decorated Papers, a source book for designers, published by Thames and Hudson in 2016, that has a rich array of different kinds of decorated papers, not only paste papers, but marble papers and so forth. I recommend it highly. There's all sorts of interesting tools you can make in order to fashion your own paste papers, uh, taping Q-tips together, making different kinds of uh, combs and foam brushes from found objects and so forth. And this is part of the fun of paste paper, is making the tools to make the marks that form the basis for the decorative patterns. Here are a couple examples. Um, of course, there's the element of freehand and repetitive mark that become part of this process. Here I'm showing some paste papers I've made myself. I like to experiment with subtle transitions in warm and cool colors. And this is made here by using either a Q-tip or the end of a brush, or sometimes uh, limiting the value range within a common hue with horizontal and vertical marks done freehand. In this one, I made the um, four marks by taping four uh, chopsticks together to do freehand zigzag marks uh, through the transition of uh, blue to violet. And here, um, this paper was made by a series of horizontal stripes in blue, uh, darker blue and lighter blue, followed by pushing that uh, pigment and the paste paper uh, with um, uh, map board chips to create the lighter rectilinear marks. And then after that paste paper dried, I added stencil or pouchoir for a darker blue. And these uh, various layers create a rich and dynamic layered space to form the design. So here I'm showing three examples of books that have paste paper used as a cover. So essentially this is a pamphlet 
a double pamphlet actually, that has been cased into a paste paper cover. So the paste paper is made a little bit bigger than the book itself. Um, I score with a bone folder, fold it over, glue it uh, first to itself to create that nice folded over edge, and then the book is cased in it. Here's another double pamphlet um, that does the same thing with the paste paper. Um, and I'll uh, cut it a 45 degree angle um, so I can do kind of turnovers there. You can also use paste paper as a cover on a Coptic stitch book and so forth, or a portfolio. So here, essentially, I have taken the boards and uh, glued the paste paper to them. And then you can see here where there's turnovers. Um, it's cut twice the length of the board away from the corners uh, at a 45 degree angle and then uh, glued and turned over before the end papers are put in. And then these boards were prepared before the Coptic stitch book was assembled. So here we have some of the things we need. I have some paste that was mixed up and I've put that paste into uh, two separate cups, plastic cups, and about 25% pigment to paste. So I have a blue acrylic and paste and a magenta uh, acrylic and paste here. So I'll set those aside. I also have a larger, softer brush, and um, a couple things I'll make marks with, um, a comb and a mat board chip. But there's all sorts of different tools you can experiment with. The other thing I have is a bowl of water. You could also use a, um, a spray bottle with water. So I'm gonna take a piece of essentially printmaking paper. Um, this is Somerset Antique. Um, a 20, 250 to 300 gram weight paper. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my sponge, or you could also do this with your, um, with your spray bottle, and I'm gonna uniformly dampen the paper. Now, conventionally, I would do this process on a um, surface that you can get wet, um, a table outside, you can put down plastic, like a plastic bag or something like that. It's also an option. Paste paper is a good outdoor activity. And then what I like to do is take a little bit of the paste with a large brush and essentially kind of seal it up. The paper will start to expand a little bit from this. And this will allow me, if I want, to have areas that really don't have any or much pigment at all. Work that all the way to the ends of the paper. And then I can start to use my paste. And what I like to do is create a general ground into which I'll work. So this is a lot like finger painting or mono printing. It's a very kind of playful, loose, having the sound of birds in the background can always help, nothing wrong with that. So you'll see the direction of the brush stroke will affect the kinds of marks you can make on that surface. A couple swipes here, then I can start to develop a pattern in here. So what I'll do, what I can do with this is I can use the mat board to make some marks. So these also, so this can be a really kind of loose, fun. What you're looking for is a kind of pattern that you can use for your end papers or what have you. I can take the end of a brush, or in this case, this card, to make other marks that go through it. Q-tips, a rag around the back end of a brush, all these things. And if you don't know, like what you've got, you can just apply more color 
and do it again. It's not like you're committed. Sometimes you have to kind of warm up a little bit when doing this. So the other thing are things like combs. This is getting to be total chaos, but sometimes chaos can produce some interesting results here. I might use parts of this for different parts of patterns and marks. So I'm just gonna do another whole set just to show you some other variations. I'm more interested in not making the perfect piece of paste paper here. This is kind of interesting. You can see that the comb marks leave a kind of history of marks on there as I bring that blue into it. So you're kind of just trying to get certain passages of information. So the other way to use these chips is to make these kinds of marks where you push and pull. It's very much a kind of exercise and abstraction. So I hope you find this offer some possibility for ways of playing. Once you've completed a batch of paste paper, you can let them dry on a table outside. Um, you can even let them dry in direct sun. They'll typically be dry in about 30 minutes. If you're interested in learning more about the history of Moravian uh, church paste paper, the Moravian Church Archives has a website devoted to the history of paste paper. Another great resource may be found at the National Library of the Netherlands, which has uh, useful resources on a variety of book arts, including paste paper. For additional supplies and book arts, I recommend Tala Supplies out of Brooklyn, New York, and here's their website information. I hope you found this presentation on the history and methods of paste paper useful. It's an exciting medium because it's so simple and direct. It has rich sort of craft traditions, but I think it can be used as a really ex exciting and innovative uh, material in book arts and arts in general. Enjoy.